This is a netbook, a small underpowered laptop, ideal for basic web browsing. However, like almost all netbooks, this one is incredibly slow and underpowered. I'm however gonna make it much faster and much more usable, as I have a planned use for this netbook, which I will go over shortly. So for I.O. we have a super speed USB socket, a 3.5mm mic and headphone socket. On the front we've got here the status LEDs and on the other side we have another USB socket, HDMI out, micro SD socket and a power socket. It's actually quite a nice looking netbook which is why I want to salvage it. So this is the Asus E200H netbook running a Intel Cherry Trail quad core Z8300 Atom processor which clocks up to 1.84 gigahertz. It's got two gigabytes of onboard RAM and and it's got 32 gigabytes of storage which is part of the problem as we'll come to shortly. So weighing just shy of one kilogram, this machine is really lightweight and I want to make use of it. I'm, going, I'm thinking I'm going to use it to write scripts when I'm out and about in public places. I don't really want to take my Microsoft Surface out to coffee shops where there's a risk of damage and theft and of course liquid spilling on your laptop. This machine only cost me £20 to buy it and therefore I'm not going to lose sleep should it get damaged or stolen. Okay, so let me show you just how slow this machine is currently. So let me just try and open up the personalized settings here in Windows. Yeah, this is not particularly speedy to say the least. So let's try and open up the start menu. And though it's not frozen, it's still loading. And it continues to load. And this is a fresh install of Windows, by the way. This is, there's no bloatware. This is just after an installation. And we're still waiting. And again, it's not frozen. And let's just give up on that, shall we? This is very, very much a problem with this machine. It's super slow. And as you can see here, the other issue is storage space. It's only got 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. And after Windows is installed, it's only got 8.51 gig left. And the Windows updates all pile up as well, waiting to be installed. And that is part of the problem. And this gets you into a catch-22 situation where Windows wants to install a major update, but there's not enough space to install the update. And so it repeatedly prompts you and you get stuck in this endless loop. Okay, so to resolve this, what I'm going to do is put on Linux, specifically Linux Mint. So if you head to this web address here and then go to downloads and choose the version you desire. So I'm, I put on the most recent version and I downloaded the XFCE variant. What this is, is it's a very lightweight version of Linux Mint for underpowered machines. Then you just choose a download link for your local area and go to pendrivelinux.com and download the universal USB installer. And what this will do is allow us to pull it onto a USB stick. So just press the download button and that will download to your computer. Okay, once that's done, just choose your distribution from the list. So we're going for Linux Mint. Direct it to where you downloaded the ISO from the Linux Mint website. Select the pen drive of your choice. I recommend one that's four gigabytes in size and set a persistent file size if you wish. I tend to set it for about one gig. Press create press yes and that's going to start creating your USB stick that's probably about as difficult as this gets I'm not going to run through the full Linux installation from start to finish that's a bit beyond the scope of this video so I'm going to jump through various bits um, ahead I'm going to speed this up as you can see okay and then once that process is done just press close and reboot into the BIOS on your computer and then you need to boot into the USB drive which you've installed that onto so I'm going to just select this be free card now and that will boot into the Linux Mint installer. You start Linux Mint, or um, well, there'll be something similar if you've chosen a different distribution of Linux. Okay, I'm gonna now jump ahead through parts of this installation. I'm not gonna show the full Linux installation. You don't have to use Linux Mint. You can use any version of Linux you want, though I would recommend it's a lightweight version, such as uh, LUbuntu, but it depends on the specs of the system. Okay, that's the installation done. We'll get rid of the welcome screen, and now we'll go to the login screen. Okay, and then now we're on the desktop. My apologies that it's out of focus. Okay, well, let's try and see what it's like web surfing now, which is something that I couldn't have done on Windows. And so I've jumped ahead here just to BBC News and we'll see how responsive it is going between web pages. I'm gonna get a couple of tabs open as well. But as you can see, it's not too bad. It's certainly very usable. So if you were out and about with this small machine, surfing the internet would be quite achievable. It's relatively responsive it's only really images that seem to take a moment to load but nothing that ruins the experience scrolling is pretty smooth as well 
cart so that there's any complaints. The start menu opens up straight away where you can click the start menu and we'll open up LibreOffice as well. So we're multitasking, we've got two tabs on the web browser. We've got LibreOffice open, which yeah, it's not quite as snappy as you'd expect, but again, this machine only cost me £20 and I'm quite happy typing away here without any problems at all, no issues. So you could have something on Firefox or Chrome running and you could be writing a document as well. Okay, but what about online documents? After all, this makes quite a good Chromebook clone in a way. So let's open up Google Docs and see how responsive it is. Okay, so logging in and yeah, it's pretty responsive to be honest. I was expecting a lot worse considering how graphically heavy Google Docs is. But yeah, you can open up a template here and we can see it's pretty smooth you know there's no issues at all it's very very usable to write documents on the go absolutely ideal but let's try youtube so this is probably one you've been waiting for is can you watch youtube videos on here and yeah images definitely struggles a little bit but it's not terrible i've definitely seen worse so let's try and play a video so this is a video by lgr definitely a channel i highly recommend checking out if you enjoy the same sort of content that my channel has with a lot more editing and skills and a lot more personality and yeah in, that seems to be playing back absolutely fine no issues at all it's in 720p 60 frames per second and uh, other than the pop-up from youtube no there's no problems it's very very much watchable no issues so i'll just skip forward here just uh, there's more movement so you can see and uh, yeah no it looks, looks absolutely fine no problems at all so really i think guys that's been very successful this is very much a very usable machine it's not as slow as it was much better i'll be making full use of this now to write scripts for my videos going forward don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video.